Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. At Home with Willowberry. Or if you're new, welcome. But where have you been? I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Valerie, and in today's video, we are continuing on our home gardening journey. We are working on our raised garden beds, watering our small garden, and solving our water access problem down at the garden patch by adding a water catching system onto our new garden shed. So if you're interested, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the video. Well y'all, it took us a while, but we are finally filling up our last raised garden bed with mulch. We still need to make a trip to pick up dirt for the fourth garden bed, but hey, one step at a time, right? This is our first time ever trying to raise a vegetable garden, and we knew we wanted to use raised garden beds. We just didn't realize how long it would take us to build the beds and fill them up with mulch and dirt. We purchased four raised beds from Amazon. The first two beds went pretty quickly, and they're already planted with collards, cabbage, lettuce, Brussels sprouts, thyme, and marigolds but the last two beds seem to be taking forever to get finished. But we're getting there one day at a time. After filling this bed with mulch, I need to go fill up my watering can so that I can haul water down to my flowers and vegetables. Right now, I'm having to bring water down from the house to the vegetable garden, but today we have a plan to solve our water access down in the garden. In order to get water down to the vegetable garden, I'm having to fill three watering cans and a couple of five gallon buckets with water and hauling it down to the garden patch in my wagon. But I end up wasting a lot of water in the process. So today we are going to solve our water access problem in the garden by adding gutters and water storage tanks onto our new garden shed. But first I need to water the flowers, vegetables, and berry bushes that we have planted so far. We haven't quite decided where we want to plant all the berry bushes and grapevines that Tim started in these buckets. Right now, we're just keeping them up by the house in a bright and sunny spot, but soon we'll have to find a permanent spot to plant them. We have just a few garden chores to finish up, and then we'll be ready to start building our new water catching system. So if you're ready, let's just get into the video.
We usually make about two trips hauling water down to the garden each morning in order to have enough to water the plants thoroughly. So Tim is heading back up to the house to refill the watering cans for me. I tell you what, it will be so much easier to water the plants once we build the water catching system onto the garden shed, and I can't wait. finished with the morning garden chores, so now we can go ahead and start building the water catching system. We plan to attach gutters on each side of the garden shed, which will divert rainwater into two 250 gallon water storage tanks, which will be located behind the garden shed. The first step is to secure the gutter to the shed, and we plan to do that by screwing a 1x4 board on the outside of the shed into a 2x4 board, which will be inside the shed, and then we will attach the gutter onto the 1x4 board. I tell you what, Tim did such a good job building this garden shed, and I love it so much. 
is exactly what I was wanting. It took forever to build, but thank goodness we had mild temperatures on the days that we were building it, because today is a hot one, y'all, with temps in the upper 80s. We're out here sweating our tushies off. It's too hot for me, that's for sure. inside the shed holding up a 2x4 board that I am screwing these small blocks of 1x4 boards into and then we will screw on a long 1x4 board as well. We're basically sandwiching the shed wall between the two boards in order to make sure the gutters have a strong structure to attach to. I feel kind of guilty screwing holes into the side of my brand new shed but as much as I love this shed just the way it is it's going to serve a much better purpose once we turn it into a rainwater catching machine. I wonder how long it will take to collect 500 gallons of water. Or a better question is, how long will it take to use up 500 gallons of water when using it to water a small garden? I'm very interested to find out, that's for sure. Okay, so now it's time to attach the gutter to the boards that we screwed together on the shed wall. I tell you what, it is such a fun feeling to be able to come up with an idea and then to see it come to life. That's one of the things I love about Tim. I can give him an idea of something I'd like to build and he can always figure out a way to make it happen. For instance, I expressed my concerns about getting water down to the garden and how I wish we had water access right in the garden patch. And then the next thing I knew, we were building a water catching system onto the garden shed. He just blows my mind with all that he knows how to do. He's definitely a jack of all trades, that's for sure.
After a short little break and a visit with Milo, it's now time to go bring the water storage container over to the garden shed. We're just going to pop the water tank into the four-wheeler wagon and then haul it down to the garden. We found these food grade water tanks on Facebook Marketplace and we paid just $75 for each of them. They look brand new, but if we were to buy them brand new, they would have cost about $400 each at the tractor supply. So we got a really good deal by buying them used. We plan to attach two of them to the garden shed, and then the third one will be attached to the chicken coop once we get it built. Well, all right, let's go ahead and get this tank down to the garden. building a deck for the water tanks to sit on, but we just needed to get an idea of how high we wanted to build it, and Tim needed to figure out which configuration of gutter downspouts he would need to purchase in order to direct the water from the gutter into the storage tank. It's gotten late in the day and we've run out of time, so we figured this is a good place to take a break. Bright and early tomorrow morning, we'll get right back to work on building the deck for the storage tank.
Well, good morning, y'all. Today is deck building day. We are building the deck which the water storage tanks will sit on. And the first step in building the deck is to level the ground. So that's what Tim is going to do as soon as he unloads all the cinder blocks. Tim plans to clear the ground, level the blocks, and then build the deck which will hold the storage tanks. So if you're ready, let's just sit back, relax, and watch Tim as he gets to work. Just a skinny little twig. I tell you what, this man is my hero. He works so hard for our family and would do anything to make us happy. For instance, he has busted his butt building this shed and now the deck for the water tanks just to make it easier for me to water our garden and future fruit trees. I tell him every day how much I love him and appreciate everything he does for us. But I just wanted to tell him in front of the whole world. I love you so much and I couldn't make it in this world without you. Thank you for all you do for us. You're the best husband, father, and son that anyone could ask for. You are a blessing to all of us, and I'm so excited to be able to spend our golden years here together on our little homestead.
All right, well now that the blocks are level, it's now time to cut the boards to build the deck. Tim is building the deck to fit two large water tanks, but it looks like we will only have enough time to complete one side of the water collection system. It's calling for rain, so Tim is racing the clock. He wants at least one water storage tank set up and connected to the gutter before the rain starts. talk about some of our future plans for our little homestead. We have a ton of saplings and underbrush located between the house and the barn and pasture, so we had the true removal company coming back out to clear all that up for us. So that way we'll be able to see the barn from the house as well as the barnyard pasture where I hope to have a few goats and a couple of donkeys. In the clearing where they will be removing the saplings and underbrush is where we plan to build our chicken coop. We plan to build a deck on the back side of the house, and that way I'll be able to sit out on the deck overlooking the barn and chicken coop and the mountains behind it. We also plan to plant a fruit tree orchard in the clearing behind the garden shed. We hope to be able to grow apple, peach, and plum trees, which we plan to plant this coming fall. And on top of all that, we still need to finish building the fenced-in yard for Max and Willow. But the most important thing is the mobile home renovations. It's taking us longer than expected, but we'll get it all done one day at a time.
Tim built the deck frame in no time flat, so now he's ready to cut the boards for the floor joists. I tell you what, if it's this hot already and it's only early May, I hate to see how hot this summer's going to be. We had planned to build the chicken coop next, but whenever we do get around to building it, it will have to be after the sun goes down. We'll be out there building it under a spotlight. I can't stand the heat, but I really don't want to wait until fall to build the chicken coop. So if we're going to be building it this summer, it will have to be after the sun goes down, that's for sure. cruising right along y'all. He just finished building the deck base so now he's ready to cut the boards for the deck floor. I didn't think the deck would be ready before the rain started but so far there's been no rain and Tim is a rock star out here building the deck in the heat of the day just to beat the rain so that we can start collecting rainwater for our garden.
Well, here it is, y'all. Tim finished the deck way before the rain started, but unfortunately the sun is starting to go down, so we have to hurry to get the water tank set up so that way we can start catching the rainwater. It's calling for rain for the next several days, starting tonight, so I'm excited to see how much water we're going to be able to collect. He did it, y'all. He beat the rain and finished setting up the water catching system just in time. We were only able to complete one side on this day. We will have to complete this project once the rain stops. But I'm very happy with all that we've been able to accomplish. Our garden patch is almost complete. We just have to finish this project and we have one more raised bed that needs to be filled with dirt so that I can plant a few more vegetables that I picked up at Lowe's. It's been a lot of hard work getting our garden patch all set up this spring, but I'm hoping that all our hard work will pay off and next planting season will be much easier. I hope y'all have enjoyed our home gardening journey and I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I did. Well y'all, that's about it for another video. I can't wait to talk to you in my next one and I hope you all have a great week and I'll see you real soon. Bye y'all. Thank you.